and get fair Muslim bullet sooner than Akira. Show us the crimes they committed. Show us the guns that they possess. We came to you not with bombs. We came to you not with guns. We came to you with words. And all you gave us was oppression and injustice and prison. If Khalid was concerned about staying off the police radar, he didn't show it. After several warnings of an impending arrest, he fled the country. I joined him in Pakistan, where he'd come to find a place to resettle his family. The country had changed a lot since the last time I was here with Aaron, two years ago. The president had declared a state of emergency. The Taliban were seizing towns on the western frontier, and threats had been made against the life of Benazir Bhutto, the pro-Western candidate who is running for president in next month's election. That week, The Economist called Pakistan the world's most dangerous place. And no wonder. If any one of the country's 60 nuclear warheads ever fell into the hands of Islamic militants, the outcome truly could be apocalyptic. <laughs> On the back? Yeah, 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 no. On the back. On the back, that's a black and white. Oh, that's lovely. That's Whoa, Taro, yaar. MashaAllah. So, Sheikh Osama bin Laden is in Islamabad, yeah? Yeah. What? We started in the capital of Islamabad, but Khalid was determined to go to Swat, a region where Sharia law was being enforced by local tribal leaders. But before we could leave, Khalid needed to freshen up. <laughs> I want a very small bit of the beer, very small, I think. Mm -hmm. Please try it, yeah? I'll, I'll be in trouble. And short at the side, yeah? Okay. And not too short on, on top and the back, medium, please. So I can't go to SWAT, no? I can't go to the area where they're implementing Sharia, no? Yes, you cannot move at your own. Time. That's the tribal territories, yeah? Yeah, tribal territories. That's right beside Afghanistan. You see, and Muslims are trying to implement Islamic Sharia law, yeah? They try want that uh, Sharia should be implemented in our area. That's good. But what all they want is very rigid. They said that uh, if a woman is working, he sh she should be covered. Of course. If not covered, we will beat her. So you're talking about the Taliban, yeah? Taliban or anyone who is there. You know, Taliban means like Osama bin Laden. They want what we want. We want to live under Islamic Sharia. We law. want yes to live no? under Islamic Sharia. We want to live Islamic, yes. Islamic Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, if you do not implement every law of Allah, you, you are from the disbelievers. Believe. I don't believe that there is Sharia in Pakistan. There is uh, not complete Sharia in Pakistan, no, and uh, maybe in Saudi Arabia, it may be. He's caught not the freedom in, of democracy here. But, uh, but, but this, this is Islamic not Sharia. the solution nowadays. People of Swat have to obey the government of Pakistan. No, not the government of Pakistan. But the, the, uh, the government of Pakistan don't implement Sharia. I mean, the President Musharraf is not even a Muslim. Excuse me, please don't. Man. Oh, you're all right. I'm off. I'm back at the hotel, but uh, they've called the police, yeah? And as, I, as I was just saying, basically, I was, I was just having a haircut. That's all I was doing. And I just mentioned Afghanistan, Pakistan, what's happening, what's, what's the political situation, and uh, two minutes later, the guy's on the phone. And I thought he was joking at first, you know? I started laughing. You know, I said, come on. And he said, no, I'm calling the police for your own safety. I said, what? And then I, and then I took off my apron and I went outside and he tried to grab me. And uh, they, they tried to grab us. They followed us across the road to the hotel. And we had to run, basically. But the, I think the police are coming to the hotel as we speak. So I think I might get arrested, you know? As crazy as it seems, you know? Just before the men forced me to stop filming, Khalid made some very incriminating statements about supporting the Taliban. The last thing I wanted to do was end up in jail, accused of aiding a foreign jihadist. So I erased the footage. In the end, the police never came. But the whole experience really took a toll on Khalid. <laughs> Crazy situation. Been chased out of London, no problem. 
I don't like it. <laughs> you know, a lot of non-Muslims there get on my nerves. Uh, I, I hate England actually. Uh, I hate living there. Just I hate living there. I don't. I have no no intention of returning. Um, Ireland, I feel the same way about. A lot of non-Muslims there. It doesn't matter whether it's Ireland or England. They're all non-Muslims. But a Muslim country, being persecuted and chased out of a Muslim country, that's that's hard to swallow, you know. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's sad. It's very, very sad, you know. Angry and sad at the same time. <laughs> You see, you can't even speak in uh, a Muslim country. You just can't say, I can't believe that. I'm shocked, absolutely shocked. But, I'm, but I mean, you know the security situation here. I mean, who cares? I, I don't care. This is a Muslim country. It's Pakistan. I feel, I feel completely backed into a corner. Where can I go? And you feel the safe place to be would be with the people. <laughs> like, tell them that. There's no other way to say it, you know? You would feel more secure with them. You would have more in common with them. I guess a part of me hoped that Khalid would have been subdued from this experience. That if Pakistanis thought he was too radical, then maybe he needed to re-examine his beliefs. But that wasn't to be. From that point on, the mission of our trip changed. Khalid became singularly focused on one thing, and that was to find the Taliban. I pray, Father God, that I might know the hope of my calling and the glory and the riches of my inheritance in Christ Jesus. God, I thank you that you've made me a partaker of the divine nature, that the divine nature lives inside of me. Help me to, to see through your eyes, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of my understanding, O oh God. Open the eyes of my understanding, O oh God, to see through the spiritual perspective, O oh God. Two hands. Now we see them doing it with two hands. Like this. Don't go to tribal territory. Why not? You can't come back. Are they Muslims there? I'll speak to them. It'll be, it'll be okay, inshallah. We reached Pakistan's tribal territory. It was frightening to be so close to such a notoriously violent area. The last thing I expected to find here was a voice of moderation. Now, if you want to meet Taliban, there are a million Talibans here. Taliban is just a student. He's not, it's nothing written on uh, somebody's forehead. It's not just about Taliban. It's about speaking the truth. If you can't fight, you speak, brother. Okay, speak in a way that you don't sort of offend and provoke them. Although I appreciate all your points, okay? I, I really do, that I should do this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, I see the Muslims asleep. They're not doing anything, right? And all they're saying is keep quiet, don't speak out, don't rock the boat. And meanwhile, our land has been occupied. And I didn't come here to say nothing. I came here to wake them up. If that causes problems for me or the people around me, so be it. I believe I have protection from Allah. And I know you're bitter, but patience, patience, patience. Do you have any idea how I feel? I no, do. listen to me for a second. I, I embraced Islam seven years ago. I come back to the West, okay? Get rejected by my family. And then I get rejected by the Muslims in London. We get thrown out of mosques just for speaking the truth, okay? And then I come to Muslim land and I'm told to keep quiet. I'm sick of it. I've had enough of people telling me to keep quiet. The priority for the Muslims now is to go and defend Islam where there's persecution of Muslims going on, i.e. Iraq, Afghanistan, even in certain parts of Pakistan now. That's, I believe that's obligation for me now. The point is, throughout history you've seen, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. You have to be calm and cool and remain out of unnecessary trouble. Brothers and sisters, First of all, I want to pray for America, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will guide our nation's leaders, that you will guide them to have wisdom during the times that we live in. I pray, God, that you will help us to be the people that we need to be. And God, I just pray that, most importantly, that the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in my life, in the life of everyone in this room, and in the life of our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. First, let me just start by telling you a bit of my story. The meeting with Khalid 
wasn't quite what I expected. I felt like the anger and frustration of millions of Muslims around the world was directed at me. Now, we tend not to listen to people who support terrorists, but I think that may be our most profound weakness. Because if you actually sit down and listen to them, you will hear an anger and frustration with America and the Western world that is not emerging from a vacuum. So Kali's challenge to me was, how do you implement the Bible from a governmental perspective? And the answer is, you can't. Because when we separate the world into us versus them, the only value system in that way of thinking is a value system that says might equals right. All states, all governments are earthly powers, so therefore we cannot equate God's cause with the cause of any nation state. The kingdom of God is not about power over people. The kingdom of God is about power under. The kingdom of God is about loving people, serving people, meeting their needs, no questions asked. That's what Jesus did. Jesus healed all that came to him. If we in the West want to win the war on terror, then we are going to have to rediscover what Jesus said. And that is, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? If we sacrifice our moral principles out of fear for our security, then we will lose our souls in the process. Thank you all for coming here tonight. There's such a tendency to fear the other side. People don't want dialogue out of fear, and that somehow I'll lose something of myself if I have to place myself in a position to hear the other side, that somehow I'll lose faith in my own side. Did you lose part of yourself? No, I think I gained a lot more than I, than I lost because I think I gained a fresh perspective. Khalid's challenges didn't make me renounce the core of my belief in Jesus Christ, but it forced me to reevaluate the faith. With you, Mom. Khalid found an ex-Taliban fighter who offered to take him shooting. I don't know if I would have followed him if he'd gone any farther. There's a fine line between bearing witness to extremism and watching it turn violent. So, Khalid, why do you feel that you need to fight for Islam? I guess like so many other people around the world, I like standing for what's right. You know, for example, you would see something happening as a child, like uh, somebody being beaten up by the schoolyard bully. I challenge anybody to say that, uh, that a person wouldn't stand up for the weaker child against a stronger kid. Uh, so many people do that, you know? And I guess that's what, when I embrace Islam, that's what I found in it, that it's justice for everybody, you know? This was the last time I saw Khalid Kelly. A few days after I left him in Pakistan, the pro-Western Pakistani leader, Benazir Bhutto, was assassinated a few blocks from his hotel. And soon after, Khalid's beloved Taliban took over SWAT and officially implemented Sharia law. I had to give him credit. It was just like he said it would be. But then, Aaron was ahead of the curve, too. A few months before the US presidential election, he wrote a thinly veiled endorsement for Barack Obama in his monthly newsletter. And the words of his sermon seemed to echo his changing tone in broader American society. To the Muslim world, we seek a new way forward based on mutual interest and mutual respect. You could see Aaron Taylor as the hero of this story. But his transformation would not have been possible without Khalid Kelly and his deep commitment to the plight of Muslims around the world. We may not be able to choose the messenger, but we can choose to hear the message. And that's what Aaron did. When I first met them, Aaron and Khalid seemed to share one thing greater than all their differences. And that was a certainty, a belief that they possessed the absolute truth of this world. 
When they clashed in their debate, surprisingly, Aaron showed me that conflict is not the only possible outcome. That even fundamentalists can expand and challenge their worldview. In my own way, I pray the same for Khalid. I don't think he looks like a son at all, but anyway, she said he did. Maybe he does. I don't know. Wow. That's fantastic. It's a miracle. Miracle. It's great. If Khalid was concerned about staying off the police radar, he didn't show it. After several warnings of an impending arrest, he fled the country. And no wonder. If any one of the country's 60 nuclear warheads ever fell into the hands of Islamic militants, the outcome truly could be apocalyptic. On the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the back? On the back, that's all black. Oh, that's lovely. Whoa, Taro, yaar. MashaAllah. So Sheikh Osama bin Laden is in Islamabad, yeah? Yeah. What? We started in the capital of Islamabad, but Khalid was determined to go to Swat, a region where Sharia law was being enforced by local tribal leaders. But before we could leave, Khalid needed to freshen up. I want a very small bit of the beer, very small, I think. Mm -hmm. Try it, yeah? I'll, I'll be in trouble. And short at the sides, yeah? Okay. And not too short on, on top and the back, medium, please. So I can't go to SWAT, no? I can't go to the area where they're implementing Sharia, no? Yes, you cannot move if you're wrong. So that's the tribal territories, yeah? Yeah, tribal territories. That's right beside Afghanistan. You see, and Muslims are trying to implement Islamic Sharia law, yeah? They are warned that uh, Sharia should be implemented in our area. That's good. 
I joined him in Pakistan, where he'd come to find a place to resettle his family. The country had changed a lot since the last time I was here with Aaron, two years ago. The president had declared a state of emergency. The Taliban were seizing towns on the western frontier, and threats had been made against the life of Benazir Bhutto, the pro-Western candidate who was running for president in next month's election. That week, The Economist called Pakistan the world's most dangerous place. They have to hurt all they want. It's very rigid. They said that uh, if a woman is working, he sh she should be covered. Of course. If not true. covered, we will beat her. So you're talking about the Taliban, yeah? Taliban or anyone who is there. Now, the Taliban and like Osama bin Laden, they want what we want. We want to live under Islamic Sharia. We want to yes live no? under Islamic Sharia. We want to live Islamic yes. Islamic Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, if you do not implement every law of Allah, you, you are from the disbelievers. Believe. I don't believe that there is Sharia in Pakistan. There is uh, not complete Sharia in Pakistan, no, and uh, maybe in Saudi Arabia, it may be. He's calling not the freedom in, of democracy here, brother. Come on. Uh, but, but this is not 